Following his entry into Jerusalem, Jesus spent the first part of the Passover week preaching to the crowds, healing the sick, and confronting the Jewish priests in the courtyard of the temple. His miracles and message angered the religious leaders so much, they decided he must die. On Thursday morning, Jesus instructed his disciples to prepare a room in the city for a celebration of the Passover feast. That evening, during the meal, he offered his own prophecy of impending death and resurrection. During the Passover Seder meal, he took the bread and he broke it and he prayed. Most people don't know what he prayed. And he prayed a Hebrew prayer that is being prayed until today. And he said, blessed are you, O Lord our God, king of the universe who brings forth bread from the earth. And when he said, I am the bread of life, and he said, take, eat. So he was prophesying to the disciples that he will be put to death and he will be in the grave and God the Father will raise him up. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who brings forth bread from the earth, meaning his body will be in the earth and it will be resurrected. As the disciples shared in the rich symbolism of the Passover meal, only Jesus was aware that one of them planned to betray him. After this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me, the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. And he gave it to Judas Iscariot. Judas's betrayal was no surprise to Jesus for it had been predicted by the prophet David a thousand years before Christ broke bread with his disciples in the upper room. My close friend, he who shared my bread has lifted up his heel against me. The specific details in that passage remind us that he's not just gonna be betrayed by anybody, but by a friend and then a friend with whom he breaks bread. You can't miss the fact that this is Judas at the Last Supper. Uh, it is so obvious that the prophecy literally shouts to us about its fulfillment in the New Testament. The prophetic vision of Jesus' betrayal did not end with David's words in the 41st Psalm. In 500 BC, Zechariah also foretold another crucial detail. I told them, if you think it best, give me my pay. So they paid me 30 pieces of silver. The fulfillment of Zechariah's prophecy occurred more than five centuries later and is recorded in Matthew's Gospel. Then Judas Iscariot went to the chief priests and asked, what are you willing to give me if I betray him to you? So they counted out for him 30 pieces of silver. The common slave price in the Old Testament was 20 pieces of silver. You may recall that uh, Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery for 20 pieces of silver. With inflation over time, by the time of the New Testament, it was 30 pieces of silver. Jesus was betrayed for the price of nothing more than a common slave. For Zechariah in the Old Testament era to predict that it would be 30 pieces of silver, not 20, was contrary to the economics of the day, and yet it had a prediction involved in it that it would be exactly that amount of money. Each detail tells us specifically what is going to happen so that when it occurs, it is obvious this is the fulfillment of it.